RPV TV presents Studio RPV, the Peninsula's local news show with co-hosts Maria Soreo and Liz Brown Swanson. Hello and thanks for joining us today on Studio RPV. I'm Maria Soreo. And I'm Liz Brown Swanson. Liz, it is March and that means we are getting ready for one of the biggest celebrations on the hill. And we have a very special guest who's going to tell us all about it today. All right. And also, this is Women's History Month. That's right. And we have so many incredible women to celebrate in our community. And we are going to tell the story of a legend uh, who lives here and was one of our first city council women. So you better stay tuned for that. That's right. And really, the very big, big story this month is it's Liz's birthday month. <laughs> of course. So we always celebrate. love to celebrate. But Liz... Did you know when the very first birthday party was? I have no idea. Okay. Well, it wasn't mine. No. <laughs> it, well, it wasn't yours. It was a little before that. But it was 3000 BC, and it was for Pharaoh Joseph. And just like us, he planned his own party. I love that. I love that. And you know, yes. if you were born today when we're recording this, it is February 29th. That's leap right. Year. That's right. And you know, when you're born on a leap year day, that makes you a leapling. A leapling. And I met a leapling, and I asked her, how do you celebrate your birthday? And she said, Every four years, which I thought was really sad because we love celebrating. Well, the good news is if year. you're turning 100 today, that would mean you're really only 25. 25. And of course, so many interesting facts. I started reading more about why we have leap year. It has to do with you know how yes. long it takes for the Earth to orbit the sun, and we need it's really not 365 days, but it's a little bit longer. Yeah. So if we didn't have leap year every four years, it would then be, we'd be celebrating like you know holidays at a different time of year, and we you know and my birthday, your birthday wouldn't be at the same day, so. It's, it's all good. Very interesting and, why these things all happen. Yeah, and you know? of course, I think the Olympics, the Summer Olympics, are every four every years. four years. Um, yes. So the next leap year, by the way, is going to be twenty twenty eight. Where will the Summer Olympics be in twenty twenty eight? Here in Los Angeles. That is right. And we're already getting ready for that now. You know, exciting, so exciting, exciting. it's going to be fun. Well, so much to celebrate on yes. our show. We're going to take a quick break, all right. and when we Sounds come good. back, we're going to have a special guest to talk about the biggest celebration right here in the city coming up soon. RPV TV presents Studio RPV, the Peninsula's local news show with co-hosts Maria Soreo and Liz Brown Swanson. We are back and getting ready to celebrate the biggest event in the city. It's called Whale of a Day and here to tell us all about it is our great Rec and Parks team, Simi Soto and Lisa Wellstad. Thanks for being here, guys. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Welcome, and we are ready to have Whale of a Time with you both being here to talk about all the excitement for Whale of the Day. Mark your calendars, April 13th. How is the planning going? Planning is going great. Uh, April 13th, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Point Vicente Interpretive Center. We have a lot of exciting things that I think Simi can tell us a little bit more about. Yeah. Um, yes, just as always, we're gonna be having um, vendors, organizations, uh, we have inflatables, bands, entertainment, food trucks, uh, the kettle corn oh, and I'm in, I'm uh, in. churro guys are both back, <laughs> Love it. so that'll be fun. Yeah. Tell us about the food trucks this year. I know that's always a big hit. The lines are so long. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, so this year we're going to have B&R Burger back, Sal Picone, Vivace, uh, which is Italian, or mm -hmm. pizza, Love it. Um, and Flaming Grain, which is like a... A Mexican Asian fusion oh, truck. Yeah, so that yeah. one's new. Great. And we know that the whales are going to be coming by right on cue. Uh, this is our peak whale watch season. That's why we do whale of a day. So talk about the celebration, about the migration, and that the city does team up with the Los Serenos to Point Vicente. We do this with this wonderful docent group right. um, every year, and this is number 39. Yeah. That's right, it's our 39th year. Um, the Los Serenos to Point Vicente group, we couldn't put on Whale of a Day without them. They're there every day at the Interpretive Center, leading um, guided tours of our museum and just sort of like educational outreach. Um, we also have the American Cetacean Society, they're there and they conduct the gray whale census. Uh, yesterday they saw 12 whales go right by and our count is about 300 total, so that's about 200 going south and about 100 um, coming north. About 20 of those going south have been calves. Um, Whale of a Day was started 39 years ago to celebrate the migration of the Pacific Gray Whale and 
we know that the Interpretive Center is one of the premier locations to view the migration of the whales from the eye. But 12 seems to be a lot for one day. Is that not a lot? 12 is high for one day. Yeah. I think yesterday was just a beautiful, clear day. Um, and so sometimes, you know, we, we hope that we have sun and whale of a day. We've had really good luck in the past couple of years. Yeah. But if it's rainy, cloudy, you know, that kind of affects the count and what they're able to see from the shore. I know, Simi, you said this is going to be your second annual whale of a day. You've been with our city team now for about a year. And I don't know if you can explain the excitement. You know, you need patience when you start looking for those whales since you're at the Interpretive Center. Um, tell us about your experience when you're spotting the whales. Um, well, typically for me, I don't see the whales. I kind of see them blowing out. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. And it takes about like a good 10 to 30 minutes before you see it. <laughs> Um, and they're super far away and, you know, I wear glasses, so I'm like staring and staring <laughs> and, you know, I'm like, is that, you know, dust on my glasses? Oh, no, you know, yeah, well. someone else will see it first and then, you know, you'll kind of stare in that direction and then they'll be like towards the left or towards the right. Uh, so super fun and challenging, uh, but if you're lucky enough, you'll see a blow. Uh, I haven't seen a breach just yet, but I'm still hoping for one. I have, I have a good tip for that. The um, posts along the trail are all marked with numbers. So oftentimes, if one of the census takers sees a whale, they'll call out right behind number 100, and then you can look there, and then you know where to see. So that's a good tip for anyone who's new to the area that wants to come and find a whale. Now, tell us a little bit about the music this year, because that's always so popular and fun, too. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yes, so this year, instead of having like a list of different bands, uh, we're going to have one in the morning and then another one in the afternoon. Uh, the one in the morning is the Crossroads Band. I've heard great things about them. They sound really good. I don't want to spoil it too much yeah, uh, to get people surprised. to go. Uh, so they're going to be great. And then our second band is a Dosen led band, a bluegrass band called Sleepy Hollow. Uh, they were there last year and they sounded great and good. Uh, so they're back again. Yeah. Um, I would guesstimate 3,000 to 4,000. Um, yeah. yeah. It's an amazing community gathering for it all is. ages, yes. and people look so forward to it all. There's so much to do, something for everyone, which I love, including the vendors. Marie and I always find yes. a shopping opportunity <laughs> uh, yes. to, uh, to find, to purchase. And also, one thing that gets really exciting, too, is that it's when the lighthouse has usually opened yes. for Whale of a Day. Is it happening this year? Um, that people can go on tours, or will that be going on too at the same time? Yeah, so the lighthouse grounds will be open during right. Whale of a Day. You can't actually go inside the tower anymore, but they do have a small museum. Yes. They'll have staff and members of the Coast Guard there, and usually like the junior Coast Guard are there as well. Um, so yeah, you're, it's, it's a great opportunity. They are actually opened every second Saturday of the month, but this will be a full day with, you know, um, a, you can, we have actually kind of marked the trail with some flags. So you're able to just kind of follow it down straight into the grounds of the lighthouse. And this also mentioned there's so much for the kids, including, I know, arts and crafts, but jumpies. Tell us about those. Yeah, so inflatables are really popular. I think they're great for the kids to have a good time and then a little bit of a break for the parents as well. Um, <laughs> Simi's worked hard to add a couple extra this year, so to cut down on lines and kind of have one for, um, for a little bit older kids, one for a little bit younger kids, so that'll be out on the lawn. And then is the mermaid coming back? The mermaid will be there, well, Mermaid we'll Mallory. Have, and sea hey. yeah. shanty. Yes, we'll have player. yeah, we'll have Jordan Bush back, um, who so plays good. the um, banjo, and he was actually trained by the original banjo yes. player of yes. Whale of a Day from years past. So that's really special. We're looking forward to having him. That's gonna be so fun. What about the big whale? Oh, that, you know, that was from the Cabrillo Marine Aquarium, and I think they yeah. debuted it at Whale of the Day last year, and maybe, Simi, do you have an update if they're joining us? I know that yet. Um, they are joining us, but we're still waiting to hear about the big okay, whale. Okay, so surprises are coming. Yes. Yes. Fingers yeah, crossed. Get yourself down there on April 13th, yes. and the way to get there is yes. using this transportation. Is yeah. Explain that um, in terms of the shuttle system right. that goes on. Yeah, and because we do really utilize all the park grounds, it does cut down on the opportunity to be able to park on site, which is really tricky for everyone. Um, but we have shuttles that will pick you up at the Kendida Civic Center, take you down there. They will run all day long from 
um, 10 o'clock to about a half an hour after closing to about 4.30. Um, and so that's really what we encourage people to do. Um, we will have ADA parking on site, um, but the best way to get there is to park at the Civic Center and then to shuttle back and forth. Which is always free to park at the Civic Center. Yes, it's free also. We have uh, multiple shuttles, yeah. right? And so like, lines shouldn't be long. And it should be really easy to just get on and off. And we always encourage that, especially when we want to discourage parking in you know, nearby centers or anything like that. So, right. yeah. And for more information, we always want to tell everybody they can go to wellofaday.com and to find out everything you want to know about Well of a Day, except for watching it here, of course. And <laughs> our BBTV will be there as well. That's yes, right. We'll yes. What are you looking forward to as we start to wrap it up here? Yeah. I just love seeing the whole community kind of coming together to have fun. I've been going to Whale of a Day since I was a kid, and so it's really one of my favorite days of the year. What about for you, Cindy? Um, I'm looking forward to see how having more inflatables uh, will cut down on the lines because uh, okay. last year they were crazy. Yes. Um, churros, of course, yes. trying a couple of the food trucks and then listening to the new band, The Crossroads. Yeah, I'm going to say the kettle corn. Liz. I know, what she's speaking language food. I love, I love the kettle corn. Maria <laughs> knows yeah. my favorite tradition of all is I join all the children <laughs> and I make myself a yes. whale tail hat yes, and does. I wear it proudly even the next day. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you have to make a hat if there's, you know, there's. Everybody is a kid at World of the Day. Time. And yeah. the shopping. Oh, also, wow. too. The shopping. How could we miss that? Right. Wait, wait. And so we'll we'll have vendors that have great goods outside, but our gift shop inside the museum will yes. also be opened, and Excellent. that's such a little hidden gem. So oh, please yeah. come in and and, and buy something. Yes. <laughs> and you can certainly buy lots of nautical things in there too, so you yes. keep with the theme and uh, get wonderful goodies. And it's just it a fun. fabulous celebration. Definitely one of the biggest in the city. We're gonna have a whale of a time. A whale of a time. Absolutely. Well, thank you both so much for coming on today and spending some time and telling the community about whale of a day. Thank you. Absolutely. All right, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. You're watching Studio RPD. Welcome back to Studio RPV. Now, Maria, this month at Trump National Golf Club, mm -hmm. one of our favorite chefs on the hill, Chef Peter Dente, gave us a master class in rolling sushi, and he was on a roll. He was, and he even told us a story about how he learned how to roll the sushi, which is quite an art. Mm -hmm. And he's doing it every Sunday for brunch over at Trump National, so let's take a look. My name is Peter Dente. I'm the executive chef here at Trump National Golf Club. Uh, welcome to our Sunday brunch, and I'm going to take you on a tour of uh, what we have to offer. So here we have our omelet and pasta station, and then we have our hand-rolled uh, sushi and nigiri. We also offer um, a variety of sashimi and poke. For those of you who like to have dessert first, we, can, we have our um, dessert station with um, our chocolate fountain as the focal point and a variety of handmade um, desserts. And here we have our uh, crepe station and waffles. These are all made to order. Then we have our, all of our hot um, buffet items. So here we go. Pancakes. Eggs Benedict. Chicken apple sausage and applewood smoked bacon. Steam vegetables. Our famous scalloped potatoes and mashed potatoes. Korean barbecue, barbecue short ribs and shrimp scampi. And our peninsula chipino. And then we have our prime rib carving station. And then we have our um, sorted uh, cold station. We have our salads. We have our raw bar. We offer a variety of uh, shrimp. We have uh, king crab legs, oysters, uh, caviar with all the condiments. And then we have uh, smoked salmon, um, fresh baked uh, breakfast pastries, charcuterie, and cheese. We are without a doubt in the one of the best brunches I certainly have ever seen. I am here with the executive chef.
Trump National Golf Club. Peter Dente, thank you so much, Chef, for having us back. Of course. This is an amazing brunch, and I kind of wanted to just ask you a few questions. We talked about the sushi. Yes. And I know that you taught yourself how to roll this. Right. Tell me that story again. Well, um, before COVID, and we used to have a full team here. I had, I had my guys who uh, did sushi, mm -hmm. and um, of course, unfortunately, we're, they didn't come back for one reason or another after we reopened. When we open, when we reopen brunch, somebody had to do it, and I'm the executive chef. So, a um, little bit of training, and uh, with one of my vendors, offered me some training, and then a lot of YouTube videos. A lot of YouTube videos. Of YouTube what videos. was the trickiest thing to learn how to do? Get the rice right. Ah, oh, get the rice right. Yeah. How interesting. Yeah. But you, you don't have that rice right. It's 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 it, it just it, it just work. it does, does not work. Yeah, <laughs> so it has you, to be just right. Not think, too wet, not too dry. I don't you know, think people but, would yeah. think of that exactly. Yeah. So that's yeah. amazing. Now tell us the kind of sushi that you guys do. Oh, uh, we offer do. a variety of different rolls. Um, you know, this has definitely evolved over the past couple of years. But you know, we have our basic California roll, our spicy tuna. You know, that's what everybody's used to. And then. You know, we have, we have our caterpillar roll, that's with eel and avocado, that's more of a cooked sushi, so that's for people, you know, if you don't like raw, that's a great option for you as well. Um, just started doing these beautiful spicy tuna and crispy rice right here, beautiful. and a little scallop shell. Um, and then just assorted sashimi, we do poke, we have our wonton crisps, and you know, we like to have fun with, with the rolls, so you know, um, there's definitely um, a, a, a cycle that we go through with the, uh, a variety of, you know, we, we do like a lox and bagel roll. We have, um, I did a 45 roll for a little bit. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it was really cool. I it was a uh, skirt steak with gold say, dust, that? and okay. it, was, uh, it, was it was grilled asparagus in the middle, and uh, grilled asparagus, avocado, and cucumber, and then skirt steak on top with uh, gold dust and, tr and black shuffle. It was you great. know, what? it's such an art, so it must be fun to create when you're doing sushi. Of course, yeah. <laughs> and of course, Champagne for brunch. Of course, yeah. yeah. Bottomless mimosas. That was so amazing. Seriously, I could eat that sushi every day. I love spicy tuna. I so know, delicious. I, I could eat it three times a day. And uh, it was really yummy. We always have a great time at Trump National. Now we're going to hop down the coast over to Terranea Resort where they got a lot of things cooking. And they're getting ready for Easter and St. So Patrick's much. Day. Should we go celebrate Let's with them? Let's go take a look. Hi, my name is Henry Cox with Terranea Resort. I'm the activities manager. I'm here at beautiful Nelson's. Behind me is the beautiful blue ocean and sky. I just saw a whale go by, so you can't beat this view. Um, I want to highlight a few different St. Patrick's Day specials that we have here at the resort. On Saturday, March 16th, we have a beautiful Coastal Resin Board Beers and Boards workshop. Um, you can create your own board here that I have in front of me. Um, any design you want, any color you want, we can make it happen with our instructors. Um, beyond that, we want to highlight our Nelson Specialty Dinner on Wednesday, March 20th at 5.30 p.m. We have a partnership with the local Torrance Smog City Co. Um, the brewery owners, Jonathan and Lori Porter, will be joining us to co-host um, the event. It's going to be a five-course exclusive dinner paired with their local craft brewers. Um, very exciting. We want to highlight everything can be um, found online at terranea.com spring. Um, please take a look there and, and book your table today. I want to take a moment to highlight our Easter activity. Our Easter annual ballroom brunch coincides directly with our Easter egg hunt, which will be bigger and better this year. We're really excited to be offering a petting zoo, um, the egg hunts for various ages, as well as face painting and other themed crafts. Um, there's going to be so many games for families to enjoy during their time at the resort, as well as during the brunch. Executive pastry chef Perry will also be presenting his chocolate bunnies and sweet treats and delicacies in sea beans. Speaking of bunnies, let's hop into the Beach Cove movie night where we'll be presenting Peter Rabbit, rated PG for kids. This is a local's favorite. We did it in Valentine's Day and hosted La La Land. Um, it's great for families. It's a one-of-a-kind experience down at our Beach Cove um, where you'll enjoy the Adirondack chairs that we set up there as well as the sand and ocean right at your fingertips. With spring break just around the corner, if you have friends and family looking for a place to stay, Terranea Resort is the perfect place. We have exclusive offers online, um, including our coastal getaway, as well as our third night complimentary. With so many activities here at Terranea, I want to wrap things up here at Nelson's, where you can enjoy the slow smoke sundays, enjoy the pretzels, enjoy the slow cooked meats, um, and enjoy the beautiful surroundings here while you look out over the beautiful ocean. There's so much to enjoy here for everybody and we want to keep you updated at terranea.com spring. 
And Liz, we are so lucky to have Trump National and Taranea in our own backyard because they keep us busy they in do. both places. They do. And it's also yeah. just so beautiful to be in both spots, it right? It really is. Check out the view, enjoy mm -hmm. the coast, and uh, just relax. We're, we're, it's, we're really grateful. Especially at Nelson's. I love Nelson's. Always having so fun, fun there. Mm -hmm. Also, we're celebrating this month in March, Women's History Month. That's right. And one woman who's made history, uh, she is a legend, former mayor of RPV, and Ann Shaw, Shaw, who was one of the first city council members, helped incorporate our city, mm -hmm. and was president of Pencil Seniors. The list goes on, right? On and on. Countless she's causes. done so much stuff. She's done. Yes. Well, she announced just recently that she's going to be moving from Rancho Palos Verdes to my to home. your hometown. Yeah, my home state, Massachusetts. Yes. To be with family. Which is great. Yes. Happy she's for her. so excited, but of course, RPV will always be her home. That's right. Absolutely. And she invited us into her home uh, to go down memory lane, so let's go visit with former Mayor Ann Shaw. I'm moving because my daughter lives in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and I just think as I continue to get older, uh, I will, it will be so much easier for both my daughter and for me to have me close. We'll be about a half an hour away from each other. Um, you are amazing for what you've done for our city. You helped incorporate the city. You were on the second city council and the city's fifth mayor. So just kind of go down memory lane and talk about those early days when you decided to get involved and help create our city and, uh, just, and help lead it. Yeah, when I moved here in 1966, um, it was very clear that the... Um, that the unincorporated areas uh, were going to be subject to massive uh, developments unless their citizens were able to do something. And uh, I was a member of the League of Women Voters, and they were spearheading with other people uh, uh, the idea of trying to get local control. It was an incredible community effort. People walked door to door. Uh, getting petitions signed, and we did have an incorporation effort, and we incorporated Rancho Palos Verdes. In this very house, I, uh, my friend Marilyn Ryan, who was the first mayor, uh, I said to her, let's run for the city council. We're as good as any of the rest of them, and she agreed, and we did run. And for the first city council, there were 24 candidates and uh, obviously only five spots. And uh, I did not win uh, for that election. The reason I ran with Marilyn was because we were very good friends and we had the same group of friends. Marilyn was elected to the assembly. And then when she um, left the council, there was a special election and there were 12 candidates. One other woman ran, and there were 10 men, and I received more votes than all the 10 men together, and uh, I won that one. So I'm not sure what makes a strong woman, but from my f point of view, my mother was a strong woman, her mother was a strong woman, and we never felt that we had to ask permission to do things. It never occurred to me not to do, not to run for the city council. I would like to see more women on our council. You know, I just think when there's, when there's a cause, uh, such as the incorporation effort, or uh, in the case of the seniors, I was asked to join the seniors by a friend uh, and come on the board. And at the time I thought, well, maybe I can help them. And the seniors uh, was already a 20-year-old organization when I joined it, and they had always wanted a, a home of their own. They had gone from pillar to post. Uh, I think they moved like 18 times. So by the time I stopped being president, we were able to raise money and purchase uh, part of a building so that we uh, have a permanent senior center and it's right in the middle of Peninsula Center. Right now, I'm so glad that we have good people on the council and that we have good staff. I think this is a critical period. It's a huge problem to stop the slide, 
But, uh, and, you know, I mean, the slide, I said even when we incorporated, it was an issue. Uh, if it can be slowed down and stopped or made to be a minor problem, that's going to be extremely important. Um, I'm very proud of um, helping, you know, doing whatever I did for both uh, RPV and for Pen Peninsula Seniors. And, uh, you know, I think when you see a need, it's important to step up. So I think that uh, if you are, you know, available to help the community yeah. in whatever capacity or, a, you know, a not-for-profit organization, that's what one should do. Let's hear it for Ann Shaw. We are so going to miss having Ann yeah, Shaw right she here. Great. She's such a legend, and we can't thank her enough. Right. And we will miss her, and we wish her all the best. We do. And speaking of wishes, it's Liz's birthday month, so we're going to wish you a happy birthday right here in studio. Wow. And Liz, tell us about one of your favorite birthday stories, birthday parties. So one of the memories that always pops out in my mind, I think I was in fourth grade and it was a big deal. My parents were letting me have my first birthday sleepover, you know? That's a big deal. So I got to invite 12 people. And since I'm from with 25 cousins, most of the people that came were my cousins. And so we were so excited. My dad actually said to bed by 10. I'm like, what? Yeah, no, not for but sleepover. what I wanted for that whole year, I didn't get it for Christmas, was a big beanbag chair. They were the rage back then. <laughs> they were. Not to date myself. I'm that was a big 62. Deal. So I was in fourth grade waiting for that beanbag chair. Out it comes. We're all so excited. The music's raging. And listen to David Cassidy, probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> the music is going. We're dancing. And then my cousin decides, Lisa, to do a big jump and flip on the beanbag bag lands on the vinyl bright yellow bean bag oh and my. it just was like instant the scene shattered shot, and there were those little styrofoam balls you're probably still finding those the actually living room. and my mom was stunned because she was really thinking it was beans <laughs> like what's up with the bean bag chair so immediately we were all sent to the kitchen my mom got the vacuum out and clean for the next hour cleaning yes. up the styrofoam balls and said there'll <laughs> never be a bean bag chair my little sisters were like what did you ever buy another one no so they i got an upgrade so instead of the bean bag i got a, i got a 10 speed bike ah okay well that's <laughs> that's actually better yeah I that's think so, better but it was like we always laugh and you know what i'm turning 62 my cousin still ask me from time to time, have you forgiven me about the being bad <laughs> chair? Have you? So it's definitely stuck out in my mind. Yeah, I don't think she's forgiven her yeah. either. All right, Liz, we're gonna wish you well. So thank happy you. birthday, make a wish and blow out the candle. And thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Maria Soreo. And I'm Liz Brown Swanson. This wish is for all of you. Stay healthy out there. Happy birthday. Thanks for tuning in. Yay, I get to clap for you. Bye.